been a rough month. The sell in May turned out to be the right call this year, it would seem. It has been a tough month and we are coming up to the end of May and so far we've seen a loss of 7.8% for the Australian share market. That actually puts us on track for the worst uh, monthly performance since May 2010 where the market lost 7.9%. And back in May 2010, once again, it was worries about Greece that plagued the market. We saw the flash crash which saw the Dow Jones Industrial Average losing about 1,000 points or 9% in a matter of minutes and then recovering again and heightened fear as well. The VIX index back then was at about 40, whereas now we're seeing it at around about 20. Of course, the fears around Greece were so high that we actually saw the European Financial Stability Fund being launched. So a $750 billion firewall back in 2010 to try and ensure financial stability in the Eurozone. Uh, for two years and I guess we're at the same spot where we're worried about Greece and still driving a lot of that volatility and the losses on the market as well. This week hasn't been so bad for the Aussie market. It does follow on uh, last week's big loss of 5.6% but this week we're actually in the black so far by 0.2%. It does look like we're going to build on it but in terms of sector performance it's been a bit of a strange one. If we have a look at the worst performing area this week it has been information technology which is the smallest area on our market followed by consumer discretionary that's understandable given that we saw that Maya profit downgrade this week but then the other worst performing sectors are the utility space and the financial space so no clear trends in what investors have been doing this week and if we have a look at the best performing areas once again we're seeing no clear trends there healthcare has been the best performing area but then that's been followed through with the material space and the consumer staple space Year to date though, we're, we're actually looking quite flat. Materials has been the biggest loser down by 7.7% and surprisingly it's been healthcare that's been the winner. It's up by about 13%. So healthcare once again doing this, uh, well this week and a winner for the year as well. Julia, really interesting that the markets and, and it's pricing in of a, of a policy response, even if politicians muddle through all of this and try to present a united front. Cities call this morning is that they don't think uh, rates in the Eurozone will be cut dramatically in the next few months at all. They, they say there's a risk that would cause unwelcome currency spirals and that real interest rates are already low in many countries. So policymakers just might disappoint. Could markets be getting too uh, ahead of themselves by pricing that in? Well, I think the markets are expecting some sort of stimulus or uh, some sort of money printing uh, for the Eurozone. And if we have a look at what the ECB has been firmly focused on, it has been fighting inflation. And I guess if we have a look at the experience of the US where we saw a stimulus through the global financial crisis, one of the consequences of that was massive food inflation. We saw commodity prices also inflating quite rapidly as well. So I guess counterbalancing balancing uh, the, the argument for more stimulus is also the impacts that's going to have in terms of inflation. But I guess the magic word for markets this week has, have, has been euro bonds. And if we do see some sort of agreement or working towards our euro bonds, which would actually increase the funding costs of some of the stronger nations like Germany and France and decrease the funding costs of some of the peripheral countries, I think the market would see that as a positive. Of course, overnight we saw uh, an indicator out of the eurozone and we saw the may be business uh, confidence stats. Unfortunately, we did see the biggest drop that we've seen in almost three years. Germany's numbers, the worst in six months, and France, the worst in around about uh, three years. But tonight's going to be an interesting night in Germany. We do see that vote in Parliament on the EU physical compact. This is um, to try and strengthen, I guess, the budget deficits and debt agreements and I guess try and make some of the peripheral countries a little bit stronger like Germany. There is also expected to be a growth pact as part of that and taxation, more taxation of the financial, uh, financial area in the Eurozone. So that's going to be watched very closely. It does need to be passed by two thirds of um, the majority in both houses in Germany and of course Germany is being watched very closely to see whether it does start pushing some of those uh, growth strategies that have been so, so much talked about this week. Julia, what did you make this week of that quite remarkable uh, going to markets by Germany and, and issuing that, those 5 billion euros worth of notes and paying nothing uh, for the privilege? So putting them out to the market, they will pay zero interest on $5 billion of debt. Well, the funny thing about uh, the Eurozone crisis is while we have seen the, the borrowing costs of some of those peripheral countries uh, skyrocketing higher, the Germany, uh, the, the, the bond yields has be, have been falling lower. In fact, the spreads have get, been getting wider. And so that's actually been good news for Germany. Borrowing costs are falling while some of those countries with those high debt burdens, unfortunately, the opposite effect. So 
All in all, Germany has been a, a winner out of the uh, the lower euro, and its funding costs also falling. So I guess a lou louder uh, voice around those euro bonds, which would see stronger countries like Germany as uh, trying to support some of those peripheral nations.